All right. So we are meeting on, this is the site advisory committee meeting on um, the roundabout at Durant, Little and Dover Road. That is for the sculpture of the goddess of Cirrus. And we are meeting today to rank and review or review and rank the site specific proposals that we received from our three shortlisted artists. Those were Daniel Bora, Curtis, or Doris Curtis, and Milligan Studios. I will start with Mr. Borups. He's prepared a video. Um, and then I'll just read you some excerpts from his actual proposal and we'll go through his photos. Yes. Wait one second, I've never shared a video before, so. <laughs> okay. Can you all hear that and see it? I can see it, but not hear it. Yeah, me neither. Pause for a second. See if I can fix the audio. Oh, no, I just broke it all again. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me though? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, All right, I'm going to play the video. Let's let's just look at it, and um, <laughs> uh, if you can't hear it, then I'll I'll go over his proposal after.
Okay. Sorry if you guys weren't able to catch that. Um, did you hear any of it or no? No. No, I didn't so, hear uh, any of it. Okay, no problem. I will go over um, kind of basically what he was showing. He starts off showing his proposal for this sculpture. Um, and then he moved in the video, he moved on to show some of his past works that greatly influenced his ability to, to um, make this design for a strong, uh, iconic woman figure. Um, and then at the end, he talked about his process. Um, for every project, he likes to involve education and going to the schools. So he records his process through each um, project that he does and then hopefully um, or he attempts to go to the school, the local high schools and educate them, show them his process, teach as much as he can. And um, he's open to doing other events at museums or whatever and, and just really um, promoting the artwork itself. So um, that was essentially he just went into depth about all that. So let me see if I can pull up now. Um, so these are some with his proposal images and I'll just go over um, what his proposal said. It was basically um, the goddess of Ceres was to com was communicating strength and confidence uh, that goes beyond its historical mythological character and represents strength of all women. Um, his design attempts um, to portray Ceres in a, his design intent was to portray her in a contemporary way while still paying homage to the classical Roman sculptures. Um, you can see this um, in the flow of her dress. Historically, the goddesses are shown in a relaxed pose with downward flowing drapery. He added an element of movement and wind by having the fabric be blown back as opposed to having it pulled down by gravity. The goddess was walking forward, plucking fruit from a tree, and her dress is kind of flowing behind her. The sculpture is life-size, stands about eight feet tall, from the bottom of the sphere to the top of her outreached hand. Um, it will be bronze cast with a light patina and he is willing to explore aluminum options, which he thinks might um, also be suitable um, for this. So, um, if awarded this project, he intends to visit a local high school and share his knowledge and discuss his process for this project. Now, let's see what is in particular. He, he proposes that he can do this sculpture for $75,000. Looks like he had a $6,200 contingency in there, so it looks like we shouldn't have any problems. He would need 295 days from the notice to proceed um, to fabricate this. Um, maintenance would be very simple, much like the rest of our bronze sculptures in the collection. It would just need to be spot cleaned and a new coat of wax applied annually. Um, it would be fabricated in Springville, Utah. Um, the base would be fabricated and installed by a local contractor here in Tampa. Um, and I'm familiar with this person, someone uh, the county has used before. Um, he has not determined the placement of the crosswalks, but he does have a design for it. Um, I haven't seen that and he hasn't provided that yet, but he says that he has one. Um, yeah, so that was his proposal. Let's see. And he did send in a maquette. So this, this actual maquette is sitting at County Center. As you guys could see it, and this, these were the past works that he did um, 
that influenced his design. So these aren't quite as good, but I did take photos of the um, photos of the maquettes that were sent in. The little white specks are just from packaging styrofoam and what what, what that. All right, I will move on to the next. Which is Mr. Curtis? Um, just highlight some of the pieces. So I'll just read through this proposal for you really quick. Um, it is his hope that you will choose him for both projects. Um, he sees the two work, the two pieces. And when he says the two works, he's referring to both the Durant projects, um, the Goddess of Sirius and Professor Tusi. Um, he sees them as companion pieces in a way, both concern great symbols that represent the history and spirit of Valrico, um, known, also known as the Valley, hey Tommy, also known as the Valley of Gold. Um, both sculptures are of iconic images related directly to the orange, um, the statue of Mr. Tusi shows his dream for a nursery for growing orange trees. And of course, the statues of Sirius is the fulfillment of that dream. Um, both creations would be uh, life-size bronze sculptures. He anticipates some of the original work being done in clay. Um, that that uh, The beginning process of fabricating this would be the, the clay molding. And he imagines that he would do that work here in Tampa somewhere. He says that he's reached out to the Tampa Bay History Center as a possible place that would allow him to kind of live, work, um, art, um, where he would, um, but he says that there are other locations in the area that might be acceptable. Um, after he's done with that, he would then go back to where he's from and complete the uh, fabrication process at home. Uh, typically, he likes working in the community. Um, he thinks it's a very positive thing that has helped enfranchise people with a deeper understanding of the works of art that will be uh, in their town for generations to come. In addition to be able, being able to watch him create his art, uh, he also brings visual aids to illustrate the entire process of mold making and bronze casting. He spends a lot of much of that time that he's down there, which he estimates would be about two weeks, um, explaining the process while he's sculpting. Um, sounds like he's another educator at heart. <laughs> um, usually there is some well-advertised event or presentation at the end of his stay where he gives a, a talk um, and that all. Um, he's from Montana, so he would go back to Montana um, and begin the fabrication process. He would document the entire process um, and share that with us each step of the way. He's a very hands-on person, so he would want a lot of communication and input, which is fine. He doesn't, he does all of his work solely by himself. He has no subcontractors or other entities involved in the actual creation of the sculpture. Um, however, he uses contractors and engineers um, for site prep and masonry work as it's necessary. That was basically an overall letter of intent. Um, and then he sent in kind of a description of the, his proposal for the goddess of Sirius. Um, Maybe a life-size bronze statue. Her <clears throat> in her right hand would be an orange, in her left arm and hand would and would be an orange, and her left arm and hand would cradle a basket of oranges. A small classical tiara would be on her head, and her hair pinned up in the style of other goddesses, goddess-type figures from antiquity. 
While she would be composed in a peaceful forward striding manner, her garment would be animated in by a seeming wind to add drama and movement to the statue from all viewing angle, angles. Um, he envisions a work that women would find appealing as well as men, a work of taste and refinement. She would be like the spirit. She would be a spirit like symbol for the area and I'm sure become a popular attraction for people driving by to see. Um, the dimensions for this would be the height of the figure would be six feet tall with the supporting integral bronze base at shown in his pictures that we'll see soon. Um, the overall height of the sculpture would be eight feet tall. Uh, in addition, he's proposing to add some bronze plaques um, with a motif of oranges and leaves and branches. Um, this could fit the title of the work or some suitable, short, easily readable text related to the subject. Um, the plaque would be inset into the concrete base if desired. Another plaque with additional text could also be provided. Um, the bronze statue would be mounted to a cast concrete base that would measure seven feet in height with the approximate footprint of a four by six by four by six or four foot six inches by four foot six inches. This base would, um, the base would be configured like shown in the photos. Overall height of the bronze statue mounted to the masonry would be 15 feet tall. There would be a larger ground level masonry pad that would be mounted, that it would be mounted to. The size for this pad is to be determined by the engineer um, based on the site conditions. Um, he believes that he can do this project for 75,000 and he guarantees that price. And he goes on to explain how he's never uh, over had cost overruns or budget concerns in any of his other projects. So he's confident that it could be done. Um, just a little bit about his work ethic. He uses state of the art methods and materials for the creation of his work. Bronze is the very best choice for outdoor sculpture and stands up to the test of time and to the elements very well. He offers a variety of different color choices for the colored finish of the statue. His initial thought is to have it um, more of a gold patina or surface treatment for the entire statue, but he would give the county that those choices. Um, he does request a full year to create the work. Uh, if he were offered both commissions, he would still, he would complete both within the same time frame, is what he was saying. He typically works on about, um, he's worked on as much to uh, as five projects at a time. That's how he prefers to work. Um, but he likes to give himself 12 months, 12 months for these sorts of projects. Um, so, and he provides a little schedule of all of this and he uh, lets us know that he can do the work faster if we're pressed for time, um, but he, that he, he wanted to let us know that he's currently a finalist for two other large scale projects. So he would prefer to have the 12 month time frame. And that was it. Let's see if I can find his pictures. I can see them, but you guys can't. Amanda? Yep. It's Tommy. Hey, I just want to let y'all know that, you know, we're still in land acquisition out there on both of these projects, which probably won't be complete till next spring. So I, if the earliest we'll be bidding it is next summer. So we've got okay. some time. 
we've got some time, and everybody should be panicking about the uh, timing of the statue. I mean, obviously, if it starts when we start the construction, which would be closer to the probably the end of next year at the earliest, you know, or next fall, I think we'll be all right. But I think everything might fall, fall online good because once you finish this process, it gets approved and you get his contract and all that. He can schedule us in. It should time out pretty good. Who, right. and that's for whoever. Right. And the process does take a long time to get it executed, you know, four to six months. So um, yeah. that sounds good. Yep. So you said you're um, in land acquisition and then next is what? Uh, Bidding. So you said you bid it out until next summer? Yeah, I think we, we could be procuring it next summer. It's really the land acquisition. It's just really up in the air right now with, with you know, some of these projects. It's just, you know, you got to go through eminent domain on both of the, my, these projects have have tricky um, parcel owners on them and uh, they're going to get attorneys involved and we got to do that. We got to go through the due diligence and process of getting that land and, and you know, Dean DeRose is our land acquisition guy at the county attorney's office. He's doing really good. He's doing the best he can, but it just takes time. Yeah, great. No, that's, that's good information as far as project timelines go. Yeah. Um, I mean, Tommy, we, I'm really, again, this is Megan. I'm really glad you volunteered that information because that was going to be my exact question, uh, which was what, what's the construction timeline? Yeah. And you know, these, these, uh, the roundabouts are tricky because they, they, they could impact, you know, little pieces here and there and little temporary construction easements we need and everything. Some of the slopes are changing, but you know, both of these intersections are getting kind of overhauled with these roundabouts. They're going to be beautiful when they're done, but it's just going to take a little time to get everything nailed down. I think the Miller Durant one has almost, I think it's like 18 little parcels we're dealing with. You know, time you do the temporary construction easements, the drive in driveways and all that. But it, and it just takes time. But once the machine goes, it will go. So that, that's one promising thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm um, pulling up the pictures that he sent, and I believe these are just some reference work. Uh, and then he did not send in a maquette. Um, he was trying to, but he had issues with mailing and. Um, so these are the only photos that we have, which I believe we seen when we short listed these photos. Or maybe not. Maybe he just sent these. These are the clay models. So this is, I guess, an idea that he has for the wording that would be on the plinth. Those um, plaques, as he called them. I'm gonna go back to that. That's what he's presuming the, the base and all of that would look like. I'm guessing this is the two foot tall bronze piece there. All right, that's it for Mr. Curtis. Um, Let's go on to Milligan Studios. Um, and there's the phone. So a graphic representation of what it would look like in a in just a stock roundabout. <laughs> um, Milligan Studio says that they are familiar with the, wants you to know that they're familiar with the special requirements of roundabouts as they've done roundabouts in South Dakota, actually the first roundabout in South Dakota. Uh, we're offering Sirius a contemporary sculpture with neoclassic overtones. Sirius will be uniquely Florida sculpture as the bronze goddess is 
seven and a half feet high, rising out of a two and a half foot gulf waters, wave of gulf waters, holding 24 carat gilt orange over her head as if it were the sun. Elegant lines and soft blue water light will provide drivers with a read of this beautiful work that will create a lasting impression, but not a distraction from the operation of the vehicle. Um, they kind of drew inspiration from, yeah, yeah, obviously the oranges and the orange industry. Sirius wears a band of orange blossoms around her head. She is the feminine goddess of an abundant of abundant crops, and it is proposed that this delicate flower is also to illustrate the informal informational sign. Um, let's talk, they talk about the glass that would be used, the architectural glass that would be used to create the waves. It would be a UV, um, steady, robust, and vibrant. Um, the glass panels will be approximately six feet by two feet. They will be mounted using U channels and brackets specifically designed for public art, as these panels will be wrapped with painted bronze. Um, they should be well protected, but we will work with a strong structural engineer to ensure their security. If it calls for it, they can be switched to behind. They can be the they can be behind the UV and flame resistant clear polycarbonate panel, which is durable and normally used in airplane windows and by NASA. So they have options to guarantee the safety and security of this architectural glass. Um, I believe that this is the font that they would propose for um, some of the markers um, that we've requested, some of the signage markers. Um, so I'll get back to that. The, the signs that they would, they would work with the commissioner's text to design a sleek modern look, which would be made of grade 5052 aluminum, um, known for its strong ductile and lightweight profile. It is corrosion. It is corrosion resistant, especially in salt water and marine atmospheres. It's not affected by heavy rains or high humidity. Um, they've enclosed a design example to the right, which is clean, simple, and features a central image, which draws the viewer in but does not detract. We would create a modified orange blossom and orange as the focal point for this project. So this this where the bird is would be something else. Plinth materials. The required plinth for this commission is rather large. It's a we requested a 10 by 10 foot plinth, which they call a modest <laughs> room. So um, and they believe that 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 plinth, a plinth of that size would require um, a large amount of the budget. So in light of that, they've designed an alternate plinth, which would free up some of the budget and allow for the concrete to be clad with natural stones, such as marble. Um, we understand that each side of the plinth platform will feature 3.5 inch bronze letters with predetermined inscriptions um, as set forth in the request for proposals. The orange in her hand will be gilded in 24 karat gold. So this is the modification that they would like to see. Um, basically, I think they've reduced the height of the plinth and they've created more like a um, angled platform on top. The durability of the materials. Milligan provides a two year warranty on any of their materials and craftsmanships. That being said, bronze is, um, they have bron the oldest bronze artifact is over 5,000 years old. It's a material for generations that requires little maintenance and is graffiti resistant and it's easily clean. 
They would build this piece with a stainless steel interior armature, um, which would be secured to a thick stainless steel base plate and anchored into the cement base. The stainless steel armature would be highly rust resistant um, as it is the nature of stainless and robust. The sculpture will be finished with anti-graffiti coating. Um, and they've used architectural grade kiln formed glass in other projects. Um, like most glass, such, stain gla such as stained glass, the color will survive for generations. Um, the lighting scheme supplied by their installer is high, is high quality and has been supplied to many public art projects in, the, in Florida. It's proven durable for over 20 years or more. Um, the estimated schedule. Uh, to build and install Cirrus would take approximately four to five months for them, depending on the continuing impact of COVID and the chain supply or the supply chain. So roughly, if everything were to go smoothly, they could do it in four to five months. Um, but obviously, uh, COVID could impact their schedule. So they've provided images of their maquette. This is what they sent in. And I will show pictures of that. Reference images. They proposed that they could do it for $75,000. Um, their contingency is less than a thousand, so um, the budget would be tight, but um, they have it. They have it broken down in other places. It looks it's definitely doable. And let's pull up some of their images. Use any white specs you see that again is packaging. And that's it. Okay, were there any others that I needed to go back to or was there any discussion that you'd like to have? Hey, Amanda, I'm sorry I'm late. This was Tommy, but I, I guess I, I read the letter. The other one was just a letter, right? From um, Mr. Chris, uh, Curtis. No. Yeah, let's see. So you didn't, yeah, he's, I, he sent in some pictures as well. Okay, one second. If you don't mind, I'm so sorry. I was waiting to, I kept trying to get on the meeting and then finally let's let me in, so. <laughs> no worries. We've got a little bit of time left. Let's look it over.
I did not get pictures on that one, I think. From uh, Gareth Curtis? Right, he did not include them in his proposal. However, he sent them individually. There's just only so much I can send. Uh, I, got, uh, I got you. Oh, I've got them open in another window. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay. Got three screens. Okay. So these are some of his past works, reference photos. So he didn't do the, um, he didn't do a specific, was, it, was this his mock-up or was it? This is, yeah, this is his maquette. However, he did not mail it in. So I just have these images that he sent of it. Gotcha. Is that a new one? Was that from the original set of pictures that that he sent? You know, I, I want to think so, but I'd actually have to go back and check. I feel like he didn't he didn't provide us a actual proposal in his response to the RFP or the call for artists. I believe that he was the one who just showed us his previous work. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember. I'd have to actually. I just re to. I remember talking about the flow of the skirt, and this one just doesn't seem like it's the same one. Can I ask a structural um, question? Maybe Go ahead, I yeah. So um, the the plinths. It seems like the structural base for Milligans is is um, a lot larger. It was what ten by two, and the other ones just seemed kind of like a column. Does that do anything for visibility in the roundabout? Is it a problem in, you know, in the roundabout? Um, I don't think so. I think if that base is too far out, too wide, it will be, um, it might cause a little issue with eye elevation, depending on where it finally stands driving in a car. Uh-huh. But I, I think what's going to happen with this, I think, you know, obviously when you give a, do a contract like this, I mean, I'm, I'm not, not a public art one, but just a normal contract, somebody will sit down with them and, uh, you know, Earth will probably back, up, back me up on this. You know, we'll sit down with them and make sure their sight lines are correct. Their, you know, number one, the structural integrity is correct, you know, so it's safe and it won't fall over and all that, you know. Right. And, you know, it, it, everything will be, I think everything, there will be a whole design element that will serve as a foundation for whatever they do. And uh, so I wouldn't worry about that too much, but I do, I like, I like what you're saying that you need to double check those sight lines, no matter what, like get that, get that actual, you know, picture of it in the roundabout. And I'm sure the artist is going to want to do that anyway. It's just something as simple as which way does the statue face? Which way does it go? Somebody's going to want to, somebody's going to want to look at that before they, we all give the go-ahead or whoever gives that go-ahead to, to do it that way. Does that make sense? Yep, sure yeah. does. So it just, just seemed like some of them were just more like a column, and this one was a more of a platform. Yeah, I, I think that's it, 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 I think that's something that's pretty flexible as you move forward. Now, the part on top, obviously, is the part that's not very flexible. I mean, these guys right. have pretty rigid ideas of what they want to do, and girls rigid ideas of what they want to do in in on top which i think is important i think the base though is going to get a little bit more design sight distance how it looks and you know, maybe a little budget here and there too maybe if there's more or less budget they might change the way it looks you know i saw some like marble some concrete some different ideas in there did they say anything more about the lighting on the mulligan studio sculpture no, um, I, I don't think any of the artists actually provided like lighting plans yet, um, but they all, I think Milligan definitely included that in her proposal that yep. it would be a high quality lighting design. Yep. Um, I believe Daniel Borup also mentioned lighting. Um, but I, I, I want to I wanna speak to the, the plinth and um, that is something that I know that we specifically 
called out like a, a very specific design. Megan, you might be able to help me with this. Um, sure. As that came from the office of above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to see if I can pull it up. So call for artists. Let's see. What did we ask for? So we asked for a plinth that's six feet in height. And I believe later in here, we also asked for it to be a 10 foot by 10 foot square. Oh, well, she's within 10 foot by 10 foot. Right. Um, and so we've done this on, I think we had the Riverview roundabout in previous um, calls for artists with, that had this very specific um, plinth um, specification. We've had the artists all kind of call in and say, "Hey, can we um, can we modify that a little?" It's it's um, pretty um, grand in comparison. It's pretty grand for a, a roundabout. So depending on the size of the roundabout and whatnot, we I typically tell the artists to go ahead and propose what they think is going to be visually best and structurally sound. Mm -hmm. And if we want to hold them to the ten by ten, six feet tall plinth. That's an easy, you know, it's just a box, so it's really easy to do. Um, so I just wanted to point that out that we've I've kind of given um, some of them some ability to make their proposal what they think it should be. So I had, this is Megan, and I had just one concern about, well, with well, a couple of concerns with Million. Um, it wasn't exactly like a traditional sculpture, the way that Borups and Curtis's are, kind of mm -hmm. more traditional um, uh, Greco-Roman-ish sculptures. And it, which was what the RFP uh, was asking for. And the other thing was, um, in, and I can't remember Curtis's, so I might ask you to pull that up, but in their budget proposal, I remember they left like a, a less than a thousand dollar contingency, which kind of made me nervous look, to look at. Yeah, but they padded other areas in their budget. <laughs> I think when I, when I actually true. reviewed it, I was like, okay, this is, it's still a very conservative amount. It looks like they shouldn't have any budget overruns mm -hmm. or any complications. Um. Yeah, so I think the chief concern from uh, for Milligan's is, it, I mean, it's a beautiful sculpture. You know, it's a beautiful proposal, um, and on all of their um, digital mock-up that they sent in was just it was lovely, but it just wasn't really in the vein of traditional sculpture that was requested. It is. It's beautiful. It's different. You got that nice blue glass that'll be lit up. It is more contemporary. So I don't know about the the residents if they're if they're certainly thinking something a little more traditional classic. I know when um when the board was presented with these because we had these and these ended up being like approved by the board. I think right the RFPs and the the descriptions. Uh, yes. And yes. I, I think, yeah, I think the original description that was approved by the board was for a traditional sculpture. Yes, that was. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Bora and Curtis both have done a really good job with that. I wasn't sure with Curtis's because I, um, just reading the description this morning when I got to my email, I was a little nervous about that. And then once you showed us the the clay mock up, I thought, oh well, you know that's actually very nice. They're very similar. And um, Lisa, I think you're correct. I think it might have been Borup's original. Maybe he did a sort of, I think he did a digital mock up. I I pulled yeah. it up. 
let's see. He did. He did a digital. But so, then, but no, then, this is this is his original right here. Can you yeah. see it on the screen? Yes. Oh, okay. looks like his actual the one he sent in now is, has a little bit more. It's more refined, has a little more detail. Mm hmm. I like this one, which I think made it worse. Which, which was my sort of, was uh, it was funny because I think I remember back to saying something about like I'm afraid that um, that Curtis will tighten it up and it will get worse. Yes, it happened. Um, well, I don't know. I just like her. I like her. I like her head better. I, I, there's something about her. I just like this one better than than the second one he sent. I don't know why. It might actually. It you know it's weird. I. I can't see both of them on screen at the same time. It might actually just be the angle of the photograph. Maybe. I do agree, Lisa. I like this one. I like this one's head and the motion a lot. I think the best yeah. of all three. Or no, maybe it's not. I guess it looks like he did a second. So maybe that first one is a digital mock-up. Uh, can you go back to the one? That... Yeah, I don't yep. know. Yep. It looks like it's a clay model. Yes, I think <laughs> yeah. it's a clay model, but that can be deceiving. I don't know. Um, yeah, he needs this one's beautiful. And he needs and he needs not to clean it up. Um, like I have a say. I'm just saying. Oh, whoa. Well. <laughs> Come on. So did, okay, so when this went further on to the, I guess the commissioners or whatever other group, did they have any input, concerns? Or... The, you so guys are the first to review it. So the process is that the site advisory committee will review and rank and provide comment. This will then go on to the public art committee. Your comments and rankings will be shared with them. They will do the same thing. They will review and rank, um, and they will recommend to the Board of County Commissioners um, their top um, rank proposal. And the Board of County Commissioners, of course, will have the option to review them all. Typically, they um, typically they're in line with whatever the Public Art Committee recommends. Yes, I I think um, the what what you might be looking for is that. The the original subject, so like the, the the policy for public art and roundabouts was put forth, and then these roundabouts are kind of like um, I don't know. Would would pilot project be like an appropriate uh, term, Amanda, for that policy? Yeah, Von Boyet is the one roundabout project that we've had go successfully through the entire process. That was um, the very first one, right? Since the policy has been out. So the difference in how this is handled is simply that the commissioners of that district, um, the only difference from a, a traditional project is one that it's in a roundabout to the commissioners, one kind of decide whether or not we move forward with the project and what type of art will be displayed in that roundabout. Mm -hmm. So we just rank them um, and add comments as needed. Or no. Yeah. So, and I would prefer, I sent you guys ranking sheets. Yep. Um, I can do the ranking and get the results to you right here. And you can send me a little, you can send it to me in a chat, but I actually need the forms back. So if you can fill out okay. the forms in PDF and send them back to me by email. Sure, um, sure. I have my email open now. So either way works. <laughs> you can just email it back or you can email it and chat it to me. And so the way the ranking works is that you're going to give your most preferred proposal three points, your second preferred two points, and your least favorite one point. Please let me know if I should review any of these photos again. So, sorry, we're... So you're giving three points to your favorite, two right, points to, where, to huh? where is that? Where there was a PDF in the email that I sent okay. out last night with the agenda. Okay, yeah.
then you just want that mailed to you or emailed to you? Emailed to me. Yep. Okay. You know, now that with that last photo of the Milligan one, I just have one last point about it. And, and again, I would say it is a very beautiful um, proposal, but that is a little too form like, Fear? revealing. Yeah. 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 I was wondering that. Could, and so the thing here um, is that you can always provide comment if there was a, um, you know, we're mm -hmm. still just looking at this. So if, if this were to go through and that was a concern was maybe her wardrobe being a little too revealing or too sheer because um, that would probably be a comment of mine as well as that mm -hmm. her dress needed to be more um Flowing. she needed to be less exposed like you know like right around the neckline it almost mm -hmm. it almost makes me wonder does she have anything on yeah. <laughs> right There's um like so th that could be a comment to the artist is that you need to um you know modify the dress so that it's a lot less, I don't need to see her navel and <laughs> I'd mm -hmm. like to see the dress line stand out more from her skin. Um, those would be some comments that you can make. So keep that in mind. These are just proposals that mm, you can provide comments. Right, I'm gonna send you an email. Great. But I just sent you a chat, but I'll send you an email too. Okie dokie. See if I can get my emails. I'm checking them now. They're coming in. Give me one quick second. Um, okay, so I'm just waiting on, looks like Tommy and Noel. On the way in two seconds. <laughs> no problem. Just can't get it to attach. Give me a second. <laughs> no problem.
Got yours, Tommy. Thank you. I was having problems with it, so I also just sent it as an email. <laughs> Great, that works. Just like too. a fist. Um, yeah, I don't want to miss you. Giving the interwebs a few minutes, a few seconds here to. There we go. Got it. Oh, yeah, it did come over kind of funky. Okay, I'll give you guys the good news right quick here. Um, Looks like the rankings are as followed. 15 points for Daniel Borup, Gareth Curtis with eight, followed with Milligan Studios with seven. So those are the rankings that will be provided to the Public Art Committee at their next meeting um, early next year, probably in February is when they have their next meeting. Were there any comments that you wanted to provide um, with to the public art committee with those rankings. I do like the educational component, but I guess both the top two have that. Uh, yes, that was an excellent component to include. I, I was I was thinking about that earlier and you reminded me. Yes, Lisa, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, having uh, the willingness of the artist to come and uh, involve students in their work is really, really cool, uh, especially with all the schools that are right around the, that intersection. I think there's at least two schools within walking distance, maybe three. Yeah, that's a very nice um, piece. I wonder, would it have to be in some sort of virtual setting? Um, I mean, that's a year from now, so who knows? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. <laughs> that's po still possible, though, because I think a lot of this, the classrooms are probably virtual um, um, capable at the at this point, and they might be by then too. Or and if not, they might be by then. Well, they can just you know disperse it to so many more students in classrooms if they did it virtual. Oh, exactly. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, hi, Swati. Um, we're just wrapping up, but um, were there any other comments? before we adjourn. Could you let Mr. Borup know that the hair on, on his figurine is kind of odd? It, it, I know it's supposed to look like, um, probably like windswept, but it looks kind of strange. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, if, it, if the one on, on Gareth Curtis's, I think he's got her hair like more in a, um, like what it what's it called like a chignon almost right and that kind of has more of the traditional goddess hair it's very nitpicky i know okay so the comment would be that you would want a more traditional hairstyle i think so yeah mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no further comments, we will adjourn and that will be our last site advisory committee on this project. 
Well, thank you so very much. It's been a very pleasurable experience. Yes, I appreciate you all for your participation and your feedback. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, thank Amanda. You. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. You too. Thank you. See you okay. tomorrow. Yes. <laughs>